Airdrops, gaming, trading, educational topics. Of course, dude, when cool crypto is here, Alpha enters the chat, quite literally. Uh, but we also cover things like deep pins and stuff like that. But today, we're going to definitely talk about some crypto coins and picks, what we're looking at for the markets. But first, I want to say thank you to all the people on the stage um, on the panel. So if you haven't already, um, give them a follow because we're going to we're gonna get into all the alpha. And they're for sure worth following. If you're excited to get into it, hit that retweet button on the spaces. The best way to support is the bottom right message icon. Uh, you hit that. It's uh, tremendous helpful for us. And uh, we're hosting spaces literally every single day. So I uh, appreciate it very much. I heard the grapevine. That's seven years of good luck in airdrop farming. We'll go to those to retweet the space. Cool crypto can confirm that, baby. Um, but yeah, uh, let's get into this conversation. Um, Charlie, how are you doing, brother? Doing good, man. No, I was also going to... Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, doing good. I was also going to say hey to Thomas, dude. Thank you so much for coming, man. It was on Ivan's recommendation, and uh, he was like, dude, if we can get this guy, he is just such a value add, and he's just uh, just a tremendous blessing. So, yeah, dude, thank you so much for, for coming, Thomas. We appreciate you coming, and we appreciate your time. So, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good, dude. I've been grinding for, for literally, like... Uh, I don't know. It's been 9:30 a.m. to 11 p.m. for like three days straight. So it's just one of those one of those times, you know. It's just like, wait, when does the work end? And it just keeps every day. There's like more. It's like an unending. And no, I'm joking. So no, it's 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 been good. Just a grind right now. Yeah, as if like we weren't just on the phone like 10 minutes ago talking about the exact same thing. Uh, and uh, Nate, dude, if you guys aren't following Nate, absolute legend, content creator. He's literally. One of the best, uh, he's, he's a good friend, and uh, man, the guy's an absolute savage, but um, Nate, Nate, dude, I was up all night editing a vlog from that Korea, uh, from the Korea trip, and I also had to do two videos, and then I was also doing spaces in the morning, and I was like, man, people do not know, bro, they do not know, how are you doing? I'm good, my man, yeah, the, uh, the con con content game is hard, people get free content, they get free value, free information, they're like, why didn't I get it sooner? Why didn't I get this? Why didn't I get that? And they ain't paying for shit. So, but yes, um, I'm feeling good, feeling great. Things are all right. Um, and I do want to say I'm uh, sorry to everyone that has been listening to me. If you just inverse traded me, you would have made money. Um, yeah, so let's, ju let's well, just stop we, that. We actually disclaimed that in the space before. We said no matter what we pick, if you go the opposite direction, you're probably going to be right, except uh, the only the only exception here really we make is if Cool Crypto shills an airdrop, then you're most likely going to miss out on generational wealth. Um, in fact, you will you will like for sure miss out on generational wealth. Uh, but cool, dude, it's good to see you on stage, man. Yeah, thanks, 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 uh, Charlie. What's up, Kate? What's going on? How you guys doing? Um, I hope you guys had a great week. Today's Wednesday, uh, Tuesday. I, I don't know, man. Every day is the same to me, man. We just grinding, man. We just grinding. <laughs> Let's go, Brad, dude. I hope you're doing well. Thomas, hope you guys are doing well. Um, man, I would love to know what you guys are looking at in the market. Um, Thomas, would love to start with you, maybe. I don't know if you're looking at something specific, but if you got some, throw it our way. Yeah, well, thanks, guys. Appreciate the uh, kind introduction. Um, yeah, look, I mean, <clears throat> I'm I'm mostly focused on Bitcoin, right? So I, um, which I think is kind of the foundation of uh this this bull market um I look so I, I clearly right now what i look at mostly is these etf flows because that's kind of uh that's actually sort of the big that's going to drive everything uh, what, whatever you're interested in even if you're looking for more liquidity and whether it's I meme mean, coins DeFi. it's all coming fundamentally from liquidity and bitcoin which is Did he rug? Is that just me? Anyone else? Yeah, I can hear you. I think he rugs. Yeah, yeah we lost you, Thomas. I don't know if you're in a, no. in a tunnel or what? if you're skydiving. Oh, he's back. He's back. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Can, can, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. We got you. Okay, well, I, I don't know where you lost me, but uh, look, as I was saying, um, I'm focused on Bitcoin. I think that this, we're in a kind of a huge... Uh, just a, a really important moment in in history, really, because Bitcoin is kind of embedding itself in the traditional financial system with these ETFs, and it's kind of unlocking just waves of capital that have been interested in this market for a very long time. Um, 
there's a lot of surveys and, and different things to indicate that kind of the TradFi world has been interested in investing in Bitcoin for a very long time, but it hasn't, um, hasn't eventuated until now we have this opportunity with the ETFs. Uh, and so that's kind of, that's kind of my main focus. Look, I mean, I think that whatever happens in kind of the broader crypto space, it's going to be a flow on effect from the liquidity that comes from a higher Bitcoin price, which is just going to happen because, in my opinion, because of a, uh, really series of massive inflows coming into these ETFs in 2024 and 2025 uh, and beyond. Uh, so uh, we, we can talk more about that, but that's kind of what I'm focusing on at the moment. Dude, right on. Charlie, over to you. Yeah, no, I just, yeah, this is a good point because I really felt like with the ETFs coming on board, because the original bull runs for BTC were retail bull runs, like it was an ETF and institutional inflow. So people, a lot of times they want to say that this is the same bull run, but it's like not even close because originally the money that came in was all retail fo focused people. And maybe there was companies coming in in different ways and smaller amounts, but not like this. So I really felt like, you know, as ETFs come in, you know, it gets frothy, it goes towards the top, and the retail people that were high-risk oriented people that invested during the, you know, bear times, the low times, they're looking to exit, and they, these people are like risk-oriented speculation type people, because they didn't wait until it was safe, they invested on something that was a small cap. So I feel like, I, I don't know if this thesis is correct, but... Um, just with ETFs, I feel like as it starts to get towards the top from institutional inflow, then retail ends up exiting out of BTC and then putting their money into more speculative and risky coins because now they've come off the top from institutional. You know, we blow off a little bit of that retail, we drop down a little bit, and then institutional keeps flowing back in. Do you do you think that's a correct thesis from the from the ETF standpoint for for BTC and kind of how it grows from from that into more speculative and risk oriented coins as retail, you know, kind of leaves frothy tops in BTC? Well, I think that's a potential path for it, for it to play out. Um, there's, there's kind of, there's two factors, right? So clearly the institutional money is not, is not coming into um, old coins. It's not, it's not going to happen. I mean, traditional financial advisors are not going to re recommend, recommend them. However, we see this kind of uh, interconnected effect where when you have these kind of ETF flows come in and it pumps the Bitcoin price, you have kind of two two different effects happening. First of all, the well, yes, in, in, in a sense, it has a, like a very sim simplistic like, oh, bull market is here, so... Oh, Bitcoin is going to 5x. What's going to 20x? Let me find that coin. And then people kind of branch out from Bitcoin. But also it has kind of like, that's kind of a more psychological, emotional effect. But there's also kind of more, um, like mathematical reasons why there tends to be kind of, uh, you, you, you get, you, you can see this kind of branching out into the other sort of coins. And that's because you have all this, uh, leveraged, leverage collateral that's happening, particularly in kind of DeFi coins where people actually are like, they were literally as a tool to um, gain yield on their Bitcoin and Ethereum. They'll, they'll put the, put the co coins up as collateral, get loans and then buy other loans, like buy other coins with that. And so you kind of get this like looped, um, sort of overdrive effect of on the way up and then on the way down in terms of kind of when you get this this these bull runs happening and so i think that has the the biggest effect where it's just like the leverage kind of we 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 start to get like a leverage build up uh and of course there's always new narratives as well um people are kind of always looking for the that to be like uh, it's always tempting to find the next the next big thing, and it's when we, we we just a kind of a the, the fundamental thing is like asymmetric opportunity is always really really tempting uh, <laughs> when people when people can look at a coin and say hey this will hundred this this could hundred x if 
you know, my narrative goes right, it's always going to be tempting to gain liquidity. So I do think uh, that's that's just human nature. Right on, Charlie. I don't know if you had a response to that, but um, Brad, dude, what are you thinking about the market? Where's your head at? Do you have any specific things you're looking at in the short to midterm? Not, I mean, yeah, I'm kind of just like eyeing Bitcoin right now, you know, and trying to, you know, roll over different things into Bitcoin um, before having, and all, you know, and everything happens here in the next like 10 days, eight days, something like that. We're getting, you're looking, what's that? You're looking to roll into Bitcoin right now and to, to roll the dice and see if you uh, make some money on the having. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like taking some profits, you know, um, nothing major, you know, there's nothing like, I didn't get in really on any of the meme coin crazy super early enough to have like, you know, life changing money from any of this, you know, yet knock on wood, right. It might happen, but, uh, realistically, no, I'm, I'm just watching right now. Like as I kind of siphon a little here and there and throw it into Bitcoin, I'm watching more. So some of the, like the, the protocols and like, it's, it's nice that it's almost like a lull. I feel like in, in the meme hype, um, currently to kind of look at, see like, you know, like runes and what's going to be going on with the runes ecosystem and how that's going to play out. You know, um, there's a, a team called, uh, uh um, X rays that, um, is they, they built a wallet that has native account abstraction and is, they have like an SDK for the wallet specifically tuned for gaming. And so it's kind of like, that's cool you know, playing around with that and then just kind of taking any of the, the airdrops that are just like, hey, see if you're eligible to claim this, you know, and it's like, oh, let me check like 12 wallets this afternoon and see if any of them have anything. And usually it's like at least one or two of them will be like, here's 20 bucks. And it's like, all right, dope. And I'm just holding those for, you know, moon bag or zero. I don't care. It was free 20 bucks to begin with. So let's just let it ride until who knows what happens, you know, so no, no nothing really, uh, but nothing specific, really just kind of just kind of floating right now calm before the storm i feel like yeah we are on a super a super uh right in the middle type of like i'm right in the middle as well i'm kind of nervous to buy anything and i'm also nervous to sell anything um <laughs> so i'm kind of in that boat with you uh but i see city East popped in on the speaker stage so it's good to have you man how are you doing i hope you're uh hope you're well what do you think about the market like where are you at you got any specific coins you're looking at uh yeah no fantastic thanks for having me up um you know, I, I am looking at a lot of coins, but I'm um, really looking at trying to get mostly into the blue chip ones. You know, I don't, I do dabble with a couple of stupid ones once in a while, but every time I do, I kind of kick myself, why did I do this? Because uh, then you end up um, trying to sleep with it, uh, and then you wake up, you shouldn't have slept with it, uh, and then you don't want to sell it, and you stay up way too late, so it's just... Uh, it's terrible, <laughs> but I, I, I like Myro a lot. I think Myro and Solano is probably one of the best ones out there, and they've done a lot of drops of different tokens for their community, which has been pretty incredible. So people are getting a bunch of benefits if you're holding Myro. And so when and also like Mog, I think Mog's been great on ETH. Um, there's a couple other ones that I'm just kind of looking at, but I'm really trying to focus on the blue chip. So any kind of profits I make on some of these other ones, I'm dropping them back into the better ones because. Again, if if you a lot of people are scared to get into the twenty five million or thirty million or forty million, I prefer to get in something that's five million, ten million, twenty. Of course, I'd like to catch it when it's a sixty thousand, um, but sometimes it's really hard. So, um, if you got into something like Pepe, you know, back back in, you know a, a year ago, whenever that came out, and you got in even at forty or a hundred million you would have made a nice profit because that thing hit like I think worth three, four billion. So a lot of times people are afraid of that. But once these things start to hit big numbers, you're better off doing, doing getting into some of the blue chip meme coins. And I call them blue chip because you can go to sleep and not really worry about like them disappearing or, or getting into these pump sales where I don't know if you guys have been on the pump, which I, I, I hate that somebody showed me this, but it's awful. And like literally, it's filled up 90%. Next thing you know, people dump on you. You're sitting there for seven hours waiting for your two soul to disappear, turn into half a soul. So um, that's kind of it. I mean, I feel like people are going to run out of money if we don't get better projects out here. Man, I pray that we don't run out of money. Um, listen, here, from, from last week, Charlie has the numbers. Um, I'm scared to even ask what the numbers are. But here's what I'll say. And I, and I, and I, we have a recorded space. I remember saying this. I swear I remember saying this. I called black, uh, no, I called jump token because people were holding for an airdrop. And still nobody knows if that's like been, the Snapchat has already happened. I see Cool over there out here judging me because I'm in his territory now and I'm not going to win as big as he is. 
But it's okay, I'm trying out here. And I'm not sure, Charlie, I'm scared to ask what number I bought, uh, I, I said that I got into, but I am Wait, fairly confident. Sorry. Well, to kind of preface for everybody, everybody that's here, welcome guys. Like basically, every single week, what we'll do is we'll pick a coin that we're watching, or pick a project, or something that we you know we're bullish on. It's playful. Somebody says, you know, I think this is going to do well over a seven-day timeline, and then we'll go back the next week and basically look at those coins, kind of see who did best. This is not financial advice. Nobody go out and buy all these tokens. This is more of just like a playful way to give like takes on the market. And, you know, what you're kind of looking at as a whole within the ecosystems. So I just want to preface, preface, preface that um, because it is a playful look on the show. Like some people are not seven day traders. So they're kind of put into a position where they have to pick a coin over a seven day timeline because the show happens every week. So always have that in mind because a lot of times, you know, like me, I, I don't trade for a week. Like if I can't put my money in there for, for six months, a year, two years, I don't I don't even touch it. But I'm still gonna play. You know, you know, you know what I mean. So, what a legend! What a legend! Well, here, listen. I know my jump token had pumped up, which is exactly what I said would happen. I don't know if it went. Uh, it was around a thirty percent pump, I think, from what I called that. But then, dude, just like last time, it swung back all the way around, back to literally the same price I called it. I think. Um, and so the seven day chart is just killing me, dude. I need like the I need like the four day chart. That that'd be like ideal for me. Um, but you know. We keep trucking along. Um, I see Calvin in here. Good to see you, man. Um, you looking at any specific coins? Yes. Well, coins. this is uh, this is definitely a week where <laughs> things are kind of in flux, um, pulling back for sure. Um, I don't have a specific one. I'll I'll take a quick glance and see if there are any good ones and uh, and get back in just for a little bit. I I, uh, I was a little late, so I let me let me get a little let me let me check a few charts out. Yeah, man. Of course, of course. Cool. Dude, how are you doing, man? Hey, what's, what's going on? So I, um, I, I, I've just been doing what's been working for me for the past what three, four months. I things been good. I can't complain. I mean, I, I, I guess you guys see my timeline. Uh, I just claimed a twelve thousand dollar airdrop this morning from Saga, uh, which I staked uh, Tia in November. I was a Genesis staker from day one, so I, which you know, wait, wait like what's what Genesis staker? Genesis stakers are someone people that uh, stake their tokens the day of uh, when staking goes live. So I, I staked my uh, my Tia in three wallets from November or whatever it was, and I I just kind of left it and I qualified for multiple airdrops from there and, and Saga gave me a big one and it was a twelve thousand dollar airdrop this morning. The past thirty days, I probably made like almost forty k in the past thirty days. So that's why I can't complain. Uh, everyone has their um, you know industry they're in. Uh, as of right now, it's a very um, um, I'm heavy in the socify madness. I, you know, you go with the flow. I don't like it. Like I said, my timeline is absolutely destroyed. You know, I'm having to hashtag Param, hashtag Bubble, hashtag, uh, well, also uh, Mojo, hashtag Jesus Christ, are you, Beyond, are you, hashtag. Uh, are you Yo. on block still? Someone asked. No, yeah, block block is done. Uh, they announced their snapshot uh, this morning. Actually, uh, actually, they uh they released the tokens. Uh, but it wasn't really a good one. It's just you know we you know these things are hit or miss. But you can't really be mad because it's free. I mean, free meaning you're not risking your capital. All you're risking is you're risking your Twitter account and you're risking your time, right? But I um, mean, if you do it smart, you're fine. But um. It's a very interesting game. The moment three projects finish, three more pop up. So there's a new one called Lingo, and there's a new one called uh, uh, Somo uh, and Pixel. So it's just like the moment the moment three finish, four pop up, right? Um, so these the, the, these things are, are they never ending. It's just like, like I said, it just depends on which part of the market you are. I'm I do airdrops and I try to jump in whichever. Whichever game is hot right now, and so right now is a sourcified game. This taking over the timeline, and I don't think it's going to stop because, like I said, you're not risking your capital; all you're risking is your time. Um, but that's it's 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 lucrative, and uh, and it, and it isn't. So you don't know which one is lucrative. That's that's the reason why you just kind of play with all of them. Right now, I'm doing like six or seven of them, and but it, the one I'm really bullish on is called Bubble by uh I I imaginary ones this one is actually uh, i don't know if you guys play uh the, the temple run temple run and uh sword Surfer. 
similar to similar to that, right? You're just playing that bubble game and you're earning bubbles. When you when you earn your bubbles, those bubble bubble tokens in the game is so freaking awesome. Those bubble tokens in the game get converted into uh the bubble token when it trades live probably in the next four or five days from now so um it's almost like you're, you're onboarding web web 2 into web 3 it's a web 2 game that you download in app store on on android um and you play these games and you connect your app uh your app uh, on your iphone and android you connect it to your twitter accounts so that's how they track uh, your, your social points and your points in the game. So these things, I mean, like I'm just gonna, if I had to guess, there's a possibility that I could probably be came in another five digits airdrop from this thing. I mean, it's, it's it's ridiculous, man. It's just ridiculous. This gaming, social fire madness. Yeah, I'm just going with the flow, man. <laughs> it's going with the flow. Hey, let me ask you a question. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Are you concerned? Yeah. Having, losing your account because I know several people that have already lost their account and then they just okay remember. okay so th this is a question that they get asked all the time so there there are ways to play this first you don't want to spam that's the first thing the second is you you need a uh, you need a blue check mark on your page if you don't have a blue check mark you're you should be very 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 careful because uh, Twitter doesn't really know your human if you're human or your your bots. So um, there is this one account, uh, uh, what's name? Sweeps, that's his name. Uh, this dude is really insane. All they do is socialify, right? So they 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 spent almost a year building their account up to almost a hundred thousand, and all they do is this stuff, and they tweet like ten times a day with this thing. So of course, be careful. Don't spam. I I probably tweet. Okay, this this social fight thing is more about tweeting, right? You you tweet the projects you like, you retweet the their posts, and you, you interact with other people's posts, right? And, and that's how you get points on that part. But that's why I said like the, the bubble one is better because it wants you to play the game. You you're probably gonna get rewarded more playing the game than just tweeting. Uh, but the other ones also, but it's just. The reason why it's enticing, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Gaming was one of them. I mean, we made 25k from gaming. The number one uh, a, a trader on, I'm sorry, number one holder or account on gaming made 125 grand. These things are nuts, man. I'm just being honest with you. People are making life changing money in days, in seven days. That's why it's not gonna stop, and that's why I mean, you just lean into what's hot. It's going to, of course, the flame goes away soon. I don't know when. I'm just leaning to it, and we'll see how far it goes, man. <laughs> <laughs> what a legend, bro. What a legend. Charlie, over to you, man, and then over to Nate after that. No, I know, and it is, like, <clears throat> one thing I'll say that's pretty cool. So we met with the Blackwing Finance team um, this morning to do a podcast, and they gave us some alpha that, you know, they haven't released yet, which I thought was really, really cool. I figured me and Cade were there doing the the podcast, the guy behind the wolf account, but um, just a really cool idea what Blackwing is doing. So they're having you, you can farm points by adding liquidity to their, to their TVL. But what they're doing is, is they're going to open up their test net and you can trade with the points that you farmed. And then you can actually, if you are a good trader with a positive PNL, you can remove those points back into BXRP and you can actually make your airdrop even more by risking your farmed airdrop points on testnet trades. Isn't that crazy? Yo, that this is right. Yo, child, this is alpha, man. Now, yo, guys, we've been on Blackwing probably for the past two, three months. I think I was one of one of the first pe people started yelling Blackwing on my timeline. But I'm I'm bullish this protocol because they are the first uh, decentralized perp decks built on Inertia. Inertia is the uh, it's a uh, it's a pro protocol um, built on the um, Celestial stack and they buy by Binance Lab. So Blackwing, man, I've been bullish and stuff from for a long time. But this this guy is going to be huge, man. They're actually going to co come on on our show this weekend. I'm going to probably do wow. the AMA, AMA, so I'm excited. And Blackwing is, is going to be a beast for sure. Absolute legendary behavior, dude. Yeah, that, that was a very very cool conversation. Uh, but Nate, over for you, bro. Are you looking at anything in particular? Any coin you're excited about, or any, uh, and maybe even so, an NFT or crypto, but like whatever, whichever one. So for me, like kind of touching on what Thomas was saying about Bitcoin and all that kind of stuff, 
my bag i packed my bags a while ago which is basically like sort of a month ago in sort of nft land but picking up ordinals so basically in the past legitimately three or four months i've turned 0.03 bitcoin into around 0.6 bitcoin just from the rise in what's happening in the ordinals because if everyone looks at what happens with nfts in 2021 2022 it goes uh sort of Apes were dumb. What are these stupid JPEGs? But you didn't realize that holding them because you're a part of a blue chip community, you got airdrops, you got access to stuff and things just ran. And we didn't think that it could happen again. And ordinals are just basically that. Then you throw in the fact that you've got runes coming up as well. And then you just end up with just absolute insanity. I think Anson tweeted about the pups token. That thing just ran and things just keep getting airdropped and stuff happens. Now, I don't know if it's too late. I don't know if it's toppy. I don't know what's happening. But coming into the Bitcoin hardening, you're then going to have meme coins on Bitcoin. And then if you look at what the blue chip meme coin tokens are, like what uh, Fiddy was saying, you're going, if you get to the billion dollar market caps, you don't have those at the moment on Bitcoin, but you will have billion dollar market caps of meme coins on Bitcoin. And imagine starting from the beginning when all these things launch. Now, it will be crazy. There's going to be a lot of money made, a lot of money lost, but I've got exposure. I'm going to be having an allocation of sort of, uh, I think it's like Moon Token, Pups Token. I've got a whole bunch of just uh, runes things, mining runes, like ready to go. I've just got, I've got exposure out the wazoo, hoping one of them is a moonshot. And the thing is, I think a lot of people are going, this is crazy. We can't have what we saw in 2021. 2022 happen again but you're seeing it play out and a lot of these people that have bought in saw what happened when an ape when someone minted an ape for 0.08 and then flipped it for 100x they thought they were a genius but it kept running up and i think a lot of people are seeing these blue chip ordinal projects going hey it seems ridiculous that something who hit a two bitcoin floor and bitcoin could be 150 grand but at a 300 grand floor, it's still less than apes were at their peak. And I think there's a lot of um, sort of a, a lot of similarities to what has happened. And you've got a lot of people holding with conviction. So I've packed my bags. If I think the look, I'm smooth brained. I don't know much about all these cr like cr chains, liquidity pools, farming these things, doing all DeFi stuff. Like I'm a I'm 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 a different kind of special. I like pictures. But when I look at what's happening. Like Bitcoin's only just getting heated up. Once Bitcoin hits 100K, retail's going to be like, oh, Bitcoin, I should have gotten Bitcoin again. People are then going to think about that. Then those people that have bought into Bitcoin or that have some of those stacks, they're going to be like, hey, how can I leverage that and go a little bit crazy? Oh, I don't actually need to transfer my Bitcoin to Ethereum or Solana. I can actually use this Bitcoin to then buy something else and try to make a 10x gain on top of my Bitcoin and compound it. Then it's going to get nuts and crazy. So my bags are packed. And it's one of those things, I'm not saying go in and buy some of these things, but just watch it because if you ever felt that feeling that the 2021, 2022 NFT bull run was, and you feel like you were late to that, just watching this closely and paying attention and spending that 10 hours watching some YouTube videos, watching some things and just going, okay, could this be like, you'll see similarities and then you might pick up and run. Um, Charlie? No, I, I know this is, I'm so torn on this. Like, I feel the same way. Like, we've been talking to the Stacks team and we're going to be covering the Havening, you know, with them doing a big space here coming up soon. So look out for that. But um, I just feel so torn on layer two build outs on, on first evolution tech, like Bitcoin. And this is going to be a hot take. I get that. But anytime you look at tech, Typically, the first iteration is usually antiquated in a given period of time. And so I just feel like, it should we be iterating on Bitcoin so much instead of innovating? And I feel like, I'm just like, I, I don't know. I, I think I think maybe for me, it feels like maybe we should pull liquidity into something that's a new innovation. Keep it proof of work. I get it. You know what I mean? You need that true decentralization to have a true store of value that's really decentralized, that's really borderless, That's and, and I totally get those things. Once it's POS and proof of stake, you know, you have issues with sexes and Coinbase and 51% attacks and, and all that stuff, and I, and I understand those those vectors. But I just, you know, to your point, I, I love ordinals and I love, I, I feel so torn because it's like, do we build on top of the biggest liquidity pool in crypto and then offer 
you know, options and opportunities to, to the biggest liquidity there is? Or do, <coughs> do we, <coughs> excuse me, or do we move on to a new innovation or, or a new chain and let that become antiquated and, and just to first things, which is typically the first iteration and even on like a tech side, like whenever the first generation of a phone or a computer comes out, it's actually like a total understood, you don't buy it. You don't use it. You always wait till the second generation because in the first generation, there's issues. So I, I just, I know I feel so torn. I want to get into ordinals. I, I want to like look into the BTC layer two ecosystem, even talking to stacks, you know, and I just, I feel torn on whether or not we're, we're trying to build on top of a, build a metal bridge on a wood bridge or if we're actually doing the right thing. The way that I, like when I was going to buy some of my ordinals, I was like, I was thinking a similar thing and I'm like, I'm thinking real mid curve at the moment. I'm like, I've just been trying to actively go left curve everything. And here's the, left, here's the left curve tack. It is, what happens if building on Bitcoin is a dumb idea? What if it actually leads to nowhere? Yeah, that's fine. But what if you can then let it run up and when people find out that it's dumb, you've bought that four, you bought that Solana Saga phone. It people then realize that it can turn into something. They then want to buy it for a higher price. I don't know if it's going to work longer term. I plan on jeeting all of my damn Bitcoin ordinal rune bags once we kind of get a little bit frothy and then just take that sort of take that cash and actually like off ramp it into feet, put it into my mortgage, that kind of thing. But my idea is if a lot of people are talking about it, then it means there's going to be a lot of people speculating about it. And if I left curve it, then I might be in a better situation than working out if it's actually good tech. Like a lot of my plays are like that, just left curve it. What do I think other people might think in a month or two's time? What do I think they might doing? Because I can tell you, I'm not holding any of my ordinals once we get sort of to, towards the end of this year. Once, once Bitcoin kind of starts getting a bit frothy, you're seeing all that media attention, I'm jeeting everything and just happy with my gains. That's what I'm doing. Dang. Man, um, cool. I'm going to run to, um, I'm going to go to Calvin first just because I wanted to get his, a uh, bit of his TA first um, real quick. But uh, right before that, I want to thank our, th our sponsors because we really can't do these spaces without them. Guys, if you're into Bitcoin, Quantum Expeditions is on a mission, basically, to become the biggest Bitcoin mining company in the world. They're totally SEC filed, so their CEO, Doug Hardwick, has been in the oil and gas industry for like two decades. So they're cutting edge in the Bitcoin mining sphere, which is fairly rare, I would say. Um, this is definitely a longer term investment, so five, six, seven years. Um, not really a quick DJ in play. Um, so, you know, we've, we've had all the companies we want to work with. Um, their goal is to kind of go public and uh, be one of the biggest in the world. So they want to be trading like on the stock exchange. Uh, and they're taking thousands of investments right now, or sorry, they're taking investments right now as, as, uh, as, as small as a hundred bucks, but it, you know, can go high into the hundreds of thousands depending on how, how bullish you are kind of on it. But if you're interested in that type of content, uh, or in that type of investment, um, I pinned something at the top, uh, on the spaces. So give it a look. I think it's the first one. Um, and, uh, yeah, guys. Um, so we're going to continue this conversation. I saw Thomas just got to pop out of here. Thomas, dude, it was good to see you. Do you have any last fire off thoughts to, uh, to leave us on any mic drops real quick? <laughs> um yeah look uh, thanks for inviting me on um i would uh look i mean uh, have, fun, have fun with the games guys uh hope, hope it all works out really well um i would definitely recommend uh just thinking about bitcoin as, a, as more of a uh a long-run investment um because i don't think the uh the issue is, is that bit, 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 fundamentally, Bitcoin is a deflationary currency. Fiat money, all that stuff, it's an inflationary currency. Uh, Bitcoin is, yeah, it's 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 genuinely going up forever. I believe that. So I, I just think keep keep that in mind um, when you're kind of planning over over a multi year time time horizon. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. I, I got to bounce, guys. Um, but yeah, have fun. Uh, catch you later. Man. Have a great day. Um, Calvin, I'm going to go to you real quick for some of your picks. I pinned those at the top there. If you guys scroll over one or two, we'd love to have your take on what you're looking in the market. And then uh, I'm going to roll over to Crypto Billy and Cool after you. Yeah, so I'm just trying to play the game um, with about a, a week time horizon. Uh, I was just looking at the four hour chart, and there's a ton of ascending triangles out there. And uh, a lot of these are really doing a great job consolidating. As, as Bitcoin's been doing some oscillations and tightening, um, all these alts have been doing well they've, they've been doing one of two things some have just been kind of losing their you know falling out of formation 
and those will just need more time. I think everything will fly once Bitcoin hits all-time highs, <clears throat> but um, the, the five that I selected was just kind of browsing through really quick, and <clears throat> there's quite a few that are starting to uh, really peak up really good. I don't know if anyone wants to just take a quick look at the uh, BNB chart, but um, that thing is consolidating really well without losing any momentum, and so that one's looking really strong. Uh, Aave looks pretty good, and uh, Uni was one of the, the first ones I saw. It's just doing a really great job of kind of consolidating and pulling in without losing any of its structure. So uh, potentially, especially if within this week, Bitcoin gets back up to 72 or 73, a lot of these are going to start feeding on that momentum. So not really a rocket science um, <laughs> uh, try, you know, play. Just trying to like, you know, it's going to have to have a, a Bitcoin breakout because if Bitcoin uh, pulls back further or whatever over the next seven days, then uh, I don't know if much will have much strength this week anyway. Dude, really appreciate that take. Definitely also for myself, bullish on here. Um, Doge, man, Doge, I feel like it's always got a chance to do something crazy. You just never know what's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to go to Cool and then Crypto Billy. Oh yeah, now you guys talk about the, the whole Bitcoin ecosystem. I mean, I do follow the the money inflow in di different ecosystem. Uh, the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem is 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 sucking in a huge amount of money, and uh, same with a couple of ecosystems too. But I know for a fact that uh, uh, the L two space in in Bitcoin is absolutely going crazy right now. I just uh, I, I pinned a tweet up um, and a a project called Meso Meso Network. It just raised like $21 million. It's a big Bitcoin layer too, backed by uh, Panther Capital, Multi-Gen Capital, uh, Tim Draper. I think UD is also, UD is also a, a backer of this project. But, you know, th that's probably the one, one, one of the things I'm trying to look into is to get into the Bitcoin layer two ecosystem. There's going to be a huge amount of uh, opportunities in that arena because I think, I'm not even sure how many how many L2s are on Bitcoin, but there is a huge amount of, 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 of push to, they want DeFi on Bitcoin. They want NFTs on Bitcoin and it's going to happen. It's just the way it is. What the market wants, the market gets. So we might not like it. So we, if you're maxi or whatever, but it's going to happen. It's just the way it is. As, as long as, especially the, 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 the miners, the miners are making a whole bunch of money from this, <laughs> from the, from the, um, all in no space. As long as this is the case, it's not going to slow down. And like I said, this is an opportunity. This is an alpha. So this Meso Network that just uh, Meso, Meso Network uh, L2 coming on Bitcoin. I highly recommend you guys go look at this stuff. There's probably going to be a test net. There's probably going to be some kind of airdrop opportunity for this project. This is what I do. I look for early, early projects and try to learn about them, try to interact with them early. And once the airdrop comes, you're sitting pretty ready for that money in your wallet. So that's that's the game I'm playing. But definitely Bitcoin Bitcoin layer twos are are there's a wall of cash pouring into that ecosystem. They want they want that DeFi in Bitcoin. They want people to leverage a Bitcoin. Uh, they want liquid staking in Bitcoin. But you, you can't really do it on the on the main chain itself. So the L twos is the way is a way to bring that um, that inflow of money. And of course, Solana, Solana too. I'll say uh, another play right now that a lot of people are eyeing um, Monad. Monad uh, is a protocol. They just raised about two hundred and twenty-five million dollars uh, from uh, A Six and Z, I think. Um, and um, this is a, a, a project uh, that they 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 boast a hundred and fifty thousand transactions per second. They're going after Solana. They're going after ETH. Um, it's just, there's just a lot of money pouring into this game right now, man. Look at uh, another one. Um, I said Pantera, I think they, uh, they, they're looking to raise, uh, $850 million worth of, uh, of, of, uh, in their crypto fund. So there's a lot of money pouring into crypto right now. So, so I don't even look at, look at the prices. I don't, I don't care about that. Cause I know, I see, I'm looking at things happening in the background, right? So I don't, I'm focusing on my airdrops. Yes, I'm also paying attention to macro, paying pay, pay attention to the money pouring into crypto. We don't see it in prices right now. Not not right now. This stuff doesn't happen right now, right? 
in the long term. Yes, it, because this happened before. We had a huge influx of money into crypto um, um, four or five years ago. And uh, during the bear market, it dried up. There was nothing. No, 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 no. Uh, the VC stopped raising money. No, no tokens were listing. But now I'm in spaces. We're talking about exchanges are, uh, they are loaded with projects trying to trying to launch. They don't have the the the, the space. Everybody's launches token. There's like hundreds of projects pending launch. So if you are scared right now, don't be scared. The market dumps, it dips, it's what it is. There is a wall of money pouring into crypto. It's just slow. It takes time. And by the time you're ready, that's why I say you need to be positioned now. Be positioned now, of course, there's a risk of, of, of a downturn, which is fine. But just be, pushes, be positioned now for when the absolute madness comes, maybe in the next 18 months from now. Who knows? But I'm ready. I'm definitely, 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 definitely positioned. So... That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, and, and guys, if you want to follow Cool's airdrop stuff, he he goes live on Spaces on the weekend. He does like these long Spaces where he answers questions, like it, it, literally every single question. It's insane how many he's able to get into there. And then he also does just like just yeah, just pay attention to his Spaces because he drops all the alpha. Um, I'm gonna go to Crypto Billy next. Hey Wolf, Charlie, hey Fifty, what's going on, Cade? Look at all these OGs up here, man. Good to see you, GF Burke. I see you down there, brother. Good to see everybody. My two cents, simple. I agree with you, Charlie. It is. It just killed me that uh, we're messing with Bitcoin, the Bitcoin blockchain. I was. I'm so torn with that. Don't mess with my store of value. Don't mess with the best investment in the world, right? But it's here. The cat's out of the bag. I, I too have been hesitant to, to jump into the layer two of Bitcoin uh, and I've missed some great opportunities with that mindset, right? So as far as top five picks, of course, you can just basically for me use the top top 10 in CoinGecko or you know the top, the top uh, projects are, are going to be uh, long-term holds that you're going to get your, your investment uh, back plus a 2x, 3x, 4x, you know, whatever it is, but I am long on dot. Uh, I, in my investment career, what I've seen is when people are either running or not, there's no chatter and it's a good company. It's a good, strong company, but people are running or there's no chatter. It's, it, it's silent for a long, long time. That is typically when I buy and that strategy has done very well for me over the years. And so I'm long on dot. I, of course, once I get to that mindset, I go in, start doing some analysis and research, not just on the chart, of course, uh, but on the company and what what they're doing. And look at how many devs they have, if they've added devs, if they've taken devs off, what are their uh, marketing strategies, what are their development strategies and their connections. And I can tell you, dot is building. Polkadot is building. And it, it there's a couple great... Um, uh, Crux of Crypto is getting ready to drop a, a video on Dot, and he's a, a researcher, and he's he really has helped help help me come to that uh, conclusion as well. But I'm long on Dot. That would be my one of my top picks. Yo, love the take. Appreciate it. I'm gonna go to Fiddy and then to Charlie. Awesome, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask Cool a question. And then I want to say something. So. You know, I personally can't, like, I like the farming, I like what it's doing, I like the money, but I cannot have my timeline looking like that, it tortures my life. Like, I just yesterday went to say, like, GM to somebody, and their entire thing was like, blah, 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 this, that, I don't even know what it was, it's just freaking irritating. So, if 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 you can pick one or two right now that you like, like, I, I just heard you talk about block, and I actually did farm some block, and now I heard, like, bullshit about that, I'm like, ugh. So, like, what would you pick? Like, what do you think right now? Like, somebody need to pick one or two. What would you think the, the right one would be? Uh, I'll say bubble. The reason I say bubble because they they actually have a product that actually live that's live right now, right? It's and it's um I'll say you know bubble and G G M R X G M M R X is already live, right? They're already live already. But well, I'm bullish G M R X because it's not just about a gaming. They have a they they the Number three largest esports company on the planet. I don't know if you realize that, right? Gaming also, um, they have crazy partnerships, right? So the exposure for gaming is, you know, either you buy the token, I think staking goes live, or you could actually buy the NFT 
and stake it and earn gaming um uh, gaming tokens as revenue i like gaming is already live i like bubble also bubble i like because it's actually a video game that you're playing that actually rewards you for your time you're playing this game and once the token goes live you're you're um you're like right now i've earned about four hundred thousand tokens and bro i'm not yo my kids are playing this game man i'm not the one playing it like i put this kids to work right they live in my house for free they play go play this damn game and so they play the bubble game it's so cool it's like so, surfer surfer and you play the game they earn me bubbles once the token goes live that we uh we convert i think i've earned like four hundred thousand tokens um and if the token goes live that points 5.6 bro that's how much is that i mean you do the math right so bubble is what i'll push you to because there's actually a working product right now and you don't even have to you know worry too much about the timeline just play the game you connect that to your twitter and earn your points it's super surfer and get get rewarded that's it love it love it love it charlie over to you and then we'll go to bubble yeah i was just gonna say like First of all, that's a real farm. You you going way back, eighteen hundreds. You know what I mean? The kids will farm. No, um <laughs> yo, yo, uh, the kids have to work, man. Right. They have to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, I was just gonna say with the airdrops, like I was talking to my buddy Default. Um, I really respect his opinion. You know, he used to be a machine learning uh, specialist for DARPA, and then he hacked the CIA, went to prison for five years, got out. He lost like thirteen million dollars in BTC to Mt. Gox, got back out, earned it all back again, lost it in FTX, and then earned it back again. So the dude's just a giga chat. I absolutely respect his opinions. And what he was telling me, I asked him the other day. I was like, dude, like, tell me why companies do airdrops. And he was like, think about this. He's like, when you have a store and they give out a gift card and they say, first massage free. Or if it's, you know, that's first meal free. Something like this. This is exactly what airdrop companies are doing. To drive adoption, they're giving free value. And that free value in turn for them doesn't mean anything because a TGE is an inherently... Like, it's not VCable. So what ends up happening, I just wanted to give some color on why airdrops happen, because it can feel like like all these people are just writing posts, but there's, like, a deeper understanding for why companies do this, and it makes sense. So, like, <clears throat> ultimately, when you go to a VC and you try to get money from that VC, you need to boast a certain amount of numbers. Now, if you have no user acquisition plan and you have no users on your platform and no TVL locked up to go and borrow money from the banks, it's, like, basically impossible because you don't have any adoption driven. So what they're doing is, is they're doing social fi adoption by giving you a token that's inherently worthless, but it's got derived value by what they initially do the ICO offering, and then they do pre-seed, seed, all that stuff. And that's how they make money as a corporation. And then they basically give it to you for free, and you get free benefits by operating on their e ecosystem. And they can go back to banks, VCs, and be like, hey, we have 100,000 wallets. We have 25 million in TVL locked up. We have all this stuff. And really, it was just come get a free massage at our massage parlor, and we all joined. So it's not like all like shams and, and stuff like that. It's not. There's a deeper rooted understanding on why these companies are doing this. It, 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 remember, remember, remember when we had the uh, gaming on the on the space? Uh, how many how many uh, uh, impressions did you have on that weekend? Do you remember from the farming? That, it it was, wasn't. I don't know the impression. It was like seven, seven million, seven million, seven million posts, seven million million posts, posts for a company. You tell me yeah. how how they could get this without the farming. That's the reason why these companies are just they're going crazy for this stuff. And remember, users they want users. Like, I, you know, a, a a a tier one project comes out, they're gonna struggle. They they struggle to find users. But these airdrop stuff, I know it might be tacky and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, gaming just had a huge amount of exposure because of this and it's not going to stop because all the projects are watching gaming success are watching block succeed they're watching every succeed they're watching all these companies you know on board I mean, we're having people web 2 web 2 people have no interest in crypto none zero we're having uh, artists farming now i right? they, they, they tweet in block and i mean you're having rappers or, or or i mean it's whatever it is i mean it's probably the, the most um, the, the easiest switch on board web 2 into web 3 just by because it's so easy there's no downloading wallets for, i mean for now it's really just about tweeting and playing the game and 
it's kind of exciting, of course, but of course they're risking it too. But but what Charlie said is exactly true. The what these companies gain is hundred times bigger than what we gain. If I if I make a couple of grand, that is nothing compared to what what, what these companies gain from this huge amount of users in a short period of time. You know, and we're talking about they, their Twitter pages are growing one two. two Two to three million followers within 15 days, man. And these are real, this is not bots. These are real users from multiple countries. I heard about every, every was on another protocol that came out. They said they, they onboarded almost a hundred, over a hundred countries. A hundred countries in what, like 10 days. They, I mean, how could you get this done as a project? So it's, it's like, it's, like you say, it's a way to, uh, raise awareness with their projects is also a way for them to uh, to raise money from with the VCs. Hundred percent. Let me ask you a question. Do you think any of these games are any good? Because I'll tell you, like uh, when I was doing the block thing, I mean, you're supposed to download a few of the games, and I did download like a couple of the games, and they're lame. Like, I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't seen a great game. There's nothing that, like. That. I, I mean, it, it will probably take time. I mean, like I said, it's this this. Web three gaming is still very very new, right? You're you're trying to compare a web three a, a web three gaming industry that's still in 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 the infant stage. The web two gaming industry has been around for years and years and years, right? But this stuff is going to grow. The games get better. This is just the beginning phases of it. I'm not expecting some crazy graphics from from these games now, but eventually it's going to get there. I'm telling you, right? Look at Saga. Saga just launched uh, yeah, t this morning, and they're talking about trying to create um, multiple uh, 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 multiple blockchains for games. So games are going to have their own blockchains now, right? Not just going to be running on Swan on ETH, right? Each, each game will have their own blockchain. I'm telling you, in time, of course, right now it's still very, very early. The games are not perfect, of course, but I like the fact that you're, 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 they reward you as a gamer in Web3. But I'm telling you right now, this is just the infant stage of this. There's so much money pouring into this into into web into web three gaming, and I, I'm not I'm not a gamer, but I've seen the growth over time. I remember uh, Star, Star Star Atlas and all that. It, they they went to a multi billion dollar multi billion dollar market cap with no product. Those days are gone now, right? For, for you to command that kind of money, you need working products. So of course, it takes time. It's going to get better. Over time, definitely. I was just gonna say just one second, just say one thing that's really cool. So we talked to Blackwing Finance, and they basically they've coded in now where you can trade across chain without bridging assets. So what they do now when you get on their protocol, and I think all protocols are going to do this, and that's the only reason I'm bringing it up because you know I think what's going to end up, what they do is you sign up on their protocol with a single wallet on one chain, and then you get a unique identifier pin that's attached to your wallet, and then that identifier pin inside of their system creates wallets on all the chains, and then when you execute a trade on your one wallet on a single chain, they'll execute it with the unique identifier pin under your wallet identifier, and then you can basically create trade cross-chain, and then when you pull your funds out, you pull them into the chain that you actually uh, have a wallet on. So I think in the future, there will basically be... Um, I don't think you'll need 35 wallets. I think everyone will be kind of interoperable, and it'll be like interoperable in the sense that you won't even tell it's there. They call it intent trading, or I can't remember the exact thing, but the guys, one of the guys used to work for Robinhood for six years. He developed all the software for trading options, fractionalized trading, all that stuff. And then the other guy that uh, he worked at Meta for like six or seven years. So the guys are absolutely goaded. So I think the future is, is cross chain and not 86 wallets. Sorry, Bubble. I cut in for you, man. Bullish on that take. Bubble, over to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bubble, first time listener, long time speaker. Um, you know, I usually come in here. My name is Big Duck Energy Acid. So forget the bubble shit. I'm going to tell you how I actually feel. <clears throat> so I think the gaming thing that he was talking about, I'm actually bearish on some of that because truthfully, I've been in Web3 since 2021. And if we just watched, literally everyone here saw the same shit I saw, I'm pretty sure. We just watched Yuga Labs fail to make their game, at least the Metaverse game, you know what I mean? Like the whole thing right away, because it took a little while, right? People always thought that happened. 
So games don't release and then immediately have a game made. You can easily put out a video that looks very detailed as a game and say the game is being worked on, you know what I mean? Because people do that all the time. Marketing is important for gamers, so you can market a video and promote a game and the game won't be done still. So I'm pretty bearish on gaming still to this day until I see some actual games being done, done you know what I mean? But that's just my take on it. I'm just going to be that was actually because, you know, I like to see tangible things and see proof and receipts and stuff like that. So if it's not there in the process, I consider it to be a thought, an imagination, and a dream. You know what I mean? So anyone can have a dream, but not everybody has a process. I agree and disagree and agree and disagree and agree. <laughs> we appreciate your take. <laughs> That's awesome. Love it. Um, Thank you, now over to you. We, uh, we have a few minutes left before we're going to transition to an AMA with our friends at DeFiolio. Super excited about that. There. What's that, Charles? Uh, he's running a few minutes behind, so oh, okay. we can keep it cool. going. So I don't know. He might reschedule. So <laughs> take your time, Noah. Don't feel rushed. Can I ask cool. you? You're good to uh, have a take. Is Charlie Wolf? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. How do you define wolf? We we, we, wolf we are wolf. We, we are, are wolf. No wolf's name. I'm pretty sure he's Alex, but you sound like 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 that guy that I had dinner with in Vegas. <laughs> like we mm. are. Like I I had spent a few days that we had dinner. We had a great time. I hung out with him. I really like him. He sounds like if you're not him, I'm still cool. I'll still play your game. Oh, I can't. The whole time we were talking, I, I was waiting for the music to say, nobody. I'm sorry, but the whole time we were talking. Was bubble, 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 that was my moment. Bubble, that was my moment, dude. I was about to be hilarious in front of everybody. Bro, Noah's just out here trying to get it taken, and uh, he's just. He's just he's just trying to get it taken, you know? He's just trying to get it taken. Uh, but no, it's. it's uh, I'm Cade. Fitty. The, uh, the, there's, my personal is somewhere on the stage as well. But um, over you, Noah. No, no, no. I was talking about that guy next to you, Charlie. No. No one was like, bro, let me talk. No one was like, bro, I don't bubble, know. Bubble, dude, you did it again, Bubble. Bubble, I was about to have my moment, man. Was dude, to you talk, you bubble. There's times where you sound like Gap. That's why I was asking. Oh, no, I'm no, I'm not. And maybe I, we literally spend all day on meetings, so maybe I picked it up. But, but no, no, I'm so sorry, dude. Bubble, I got this. Tommy, why do you look like that son? Bubble, I'm okay, that. that's it. That's it, dude. No, how do I mute him? All right, listen, don't mute him. I got to run. I just want to say thank you for letting me up. I have to go and do some IRL things. But I wanted to remind you guys something. I know everybody's farming. Everybody's playing shitcoin. Everybody's doing this. But the Bitcoin halving is in eight days, like eight days. Um, and that could go up or down. Uh, most likely, I believe we're going to see a really big uh, upswing in Bitcoin. That's just my personal choice. So I would recommend anyone on stage, and this is financial advice, if you don't have any Bitcoin, have a little bit. Just have a little bit. Be in the game. I would just say that's good financial advice. But, and I Dang. I think most right. people agree. He drops the FA, dude. A full wow. FA. Wow. Wow. I see, I see uh -oh. also Calvin's hundred here. He put the hundreds up, so he might be uh, angry. So we'll, we'll go to him in a second if we still have time. Yeah. But Noah, over to you. Noah, it's, yeah, okay. I'll talk to you guys soon, but good luck, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. So I, I love this topic because uh, everyone in, in deep down below. You may go. Is everyone is? Uh, I don't think you can hear me. Hello, Calvin. Calvin, uh, Noah's talking right now. I don't know if you may oh, not no. be able to hear him. I must not. Sorry, I apologize. No worries. No worries at all. So I, I love it because everyone in, in deep down is rooting for their own token, our own network. But let's take on the actual critical thinking and let's see what networks are up and what people are actually using. And we can learn that not really any network can sustain the actual traffic that's coming. So we can't say that this is going to be the winner, that's going to be the winner, until we realize that there is no winner yet. Um, we have to get into the commercialization. Mass adoption is what everyone talked about because they just wanted their bags to go up and they imagined that when mass adoption happened, bags would go up. But now we're in the time of commercialization and the commercialization will actually determine what token is going to be the one. There's about a thousand tokens out there that do the same thing. There's about a thousand tokens out there that have the same roadmap, have the same white paper, have probably even more.
It really depends on the consumer and what the consumer takes. The reason why meme tokens are so big right now, especially on Solana, is because Solana is really controlled by VCs. And they know that every time they release either a cell phone or a shoe, they're going to do an airdrop. So what are VCs going to do? They're going to make their money some way. So they do all these meme tokens and all this stuff to make money so they can therefore do the airdrops and it doesn't cost them anything. We should learn how this space works so we can actually make money inside this space. Don't be one coin agnostic besides Bitcoin or Ethereum, in my opinion. Um, even Solana, you can choose upon because we know those are things that people buy and consumers use. But we really have to expand our knowledge and look at every single token out there and not say this is going to be the next one. Just realize what marketing is going to happen and how I can make the money off the marketing. And 50 did say something that that Bitcoin is going to run. Yes, there's going to run, but there is go look at the book there's so many sales from 80 to 100k that you really don't know what's going to happen to bitcoin there's a very high chance that bitcoin can crash because of all the sales or there's a very high chance that the vcs ak blackrock vanguard um bell something and all these other vcs come in and they pick up those dips because to them that money is nothing they trade 16 trillion dollars a year just blackrock or blackrock alone imagine all the other vcs coming in so i really can't say what direction the token's going to go aka bitcoin until we really see the the, the buys we know that there's a ton of sales from 80 to 100k tons of them guys now we don't know when the buys are coming in so please, I always tell everyone when I talk about these topics is take your profits because what's coming next is altcoin, alt season. That's a huge thing. Take this liquid powder now and get ready for those altcoins that are going to start popping off because what's going to be big is going to be money where you can stake, money where you can put and get APY back. We need a system like a banking system. People no longer trust banks. The banking system didn't have money to actually make money. Well, what's happening in this space is money's being flowed in and out. And this is why so many banks and VCs and everyone's here is because in the last four years, we haven't had this inflow and outflow of money besides in oil and some other resources. So with this inflow and outflow of money, you can realize that you need to take some of this money because there's going to be even a bigger one in the near future. So make sure you're not just on this wave, but you can be on the next wave and the next wave. With that, that ends my Nella talk. I just know Charlie is just drooling at the meme coins. He's ready to start buying. What's up, bro? Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm frothing. No, I, I, you know I don't like meme coins. I just, I had a long conversation with somebody about this and like, I guess there's like a crypto altruism to it, you know, like, like, are we going to lock up like real liquidity that could be used on like proper protocols to, to grow the ecosystem as a whole? And I feel like when you, when you, when you do this with meme coins, what you're saying to the SEC and all these companies is like, come regulate us, please. We were begging for it. We'd love, we'd love more laws around our crypto. Because unfortunately, you know, the more risk oriented that you get within the space, then you're asking for regulation because the SEC like and this is this is a totally different discussion, but like, um, like a regular like SEC or a governing entity, what it protects against is ignorance, because it protects the retail, and like retail is so used to being ignorant and that being an okay position as a whole, because they have regulating entities to come in and protect their bags. But unfortunately, with crypto, but also fortunately, the benefit is is that innovation can happen fast and in a, a really ideal and kind of cool way because of a lack of regulation. So I'm kind of, you know, I, I, I kind of love the risk, but I also don't believe in it. So like even with banking to kind of, you know, um, the hardcore piggyback you off, piggyback off, you know, I think that like, I, 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 I don't I don't know if crypto is going to work without regulation, and the reason why is because like you everybody always it seems like innovation happens with uh, it'll be like an, a varied amount of risk, and then innovation will happen again with an even more varied amount of risk, and this keeps iterating on top of itself. We see this with staking and restaking. We see this with all these protocols, and everybody always wants to push the line on how to produce more liquidity and more money out of what we already have. And this is what the traditional banking has done. If you know anything about traditional banking, you put your money in the bank, they loan it out to another person, that puts that person puts that money in another bank, they loan that out, and this will happen nine times. So really the money that's actually in circulation is like 
it, it's so over leveraged at this point. It's like pretty much like unimaginable. Nobody can pull their money out at the same time. It's just a system of, you know, let's hope nobody does a pull all at the same time. And, and so, no, I do, I do think that blockchain fixes a lot. I would love to see a banking system blockchain, but I don't know. Um, I don't know if that'll ever happen just because I, I, and here's the thing. I'm not the type of guy to be like, like the man's watching us. Like I don't do they conversations. Like, you know, those people, they'll be like, yeah, dude, they, they did this to us. And I'm like, who exactly is they just that, like that subtle, like <laughs> unhappiness with, with whoever is in that. And I think a lot of times uh, I want to say they right now, but I won't, but I think we also sure. won't. I won't see. I, I don't think we'll see that governmentally. I, I don't think it's possible. If there's an opportunity for money to be traded and for fees to be had and, and it to be leveraged on crypto or to be leveraged in traditional banking systems, I think the lobbying that you see in the United States, and this is a totally, completely, this has nothing to do with trading TA. I think the lobbying systems that you see in the United States are illegal in most countries, like even like GMOs and all that stuff. And so I think, unfortunately, money is the root of our country and basically the thing that kind of pushes it forward. And I think that crypto is kind of, you know, laughing in the face of that. And that's kind of why I love crypto in the first place. You know, it's like real trade. So, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know if a bank will happen, but I'd love to see it. Can I, can I, Charlie, I, I agree on a lot of the things, especially what you said with the meme token, and that's why all the, they're pushing it. They want regulations, but they don't want them now because the money's flowing in and out right now. They control the off-ramping and on-ramping. That's that's the whole why everyone's getting KYC'd. Almost everything you, you can KYC. The next big things that they'll start hitting are, are going to be DEXs and, app, and, and apps. And you can already look at a banking system because Apple's already offering 4% APY and so many other places like PayPal and stuff are going to offer that stuff. So it doesn't have to be a traditional banking system, what we look at. And America's already been, always been three to five years behind on the banking system. And this is the first time that they can't be behind on this system because it's moving so rapid, especially in the East world. And the East world's way bigger than the Western world. And when you really look at it, <clears throat> yes, we've been con dominant consumers and we've been dominant a lot with the buying power and purchase power. But with this transfer of wealth and with this new reign of digital air coming in, there's a lot of wealth that's going online and a lot of wealth that's in the younger generations and subscription-based stuff. So NFTs and all this stuff have already been ideas in many, many um, businesses. I mean, Disney tried to come up with a metaverse in 2016 and so did many other places. But it's just is a trend and it's always been a trend ever since, you know, the Atari ever, you know, put that thing on your head. So it, until we actually have a consumer or a place where they're ready for this, you're going to see things like meme tokens and stuff because that just pushes the flow of money. And that's all this space has been. It's another space where money can go in and out. And the other world, though, realizes it and has been using it more so of getting away from sanctions and getting away um, from other um, uh, trades and, and not necessarily having to trade to the dollar and, and, and buying certain purchase power where they can now purchase with resources and other ideas which they can then put on the blockchain and there's there's many things that south america china russia uh Ch czech Slovak, all these places africa africa wants to talk about putting water on their on the blockchain because of all the uh how many mercenaries and stuff and where it gets lost and all these things so we can't say a, a, a banking system more so a financial system and, and and that's where the banking system of america isn't as big as what people think yes we we, we talk a lot about it because we live in this but if you really look at it uh uk could come in and almost buy any one of our banks for a dollar uh, most of our banks are, are are really over under on their books um, due to a lot of chargebacks, due to a lot of uh, things happening, a lot of overextending. Um, as you said, um, they loan the money nine different times, and and only about one of those, you know, nine times something comes back. And since the average person could barely have a thousand dollars in their account right now, the banks have even less money to really loan out and to really give. So this is this is really thinking of a different financial world not necessarily a banking system of where you're going to get things based upon your finances, your stuff, not based upon your actual digital fiat. I mean, you're, you're not digital, your real fiat. And, and that's where 
you have to think of a different world and a lot of these bigger entities want that a lot of these private companies um blockchain doesn't affect everything it affects i mean it doesn't affect little things it affects everything mainly the private sector and when something gets affected in a private sector that's when you really see the change in, in, in the world. That's when you see change in the banking system. That's when you ch see change in schooling. I mean, schooling is not making money like it used to. That's why we're talking more about doing online school, digital schools, and, and ramping up that. I mean, look at Roblox. Roblox is giving jobs to do tutoring on, on their platform. So we have to look at it in a grander thing, not just a banking system. Because that's failed, in my opinion. It's been a hundred years. We have to transfer to a new financial system. Sorry, I talked so long. That ends my note. Talk. All good, bro. Appreciate the take, Brad. Over to you. And also, well, we we're gonna be scheduling the AMA after this, so there's no AMA after this. Um, so we're gonna go for a few more minutes here. Um, but Brad, want to throw it over to you? Yeah, no, I like I like what Noah said there uh, towards the end about you know it's not really a new banking system. It's a it's a financial like framework or model really. You know, because I mean, the the power is at bay, right? Like ultimately, a, a decentralized currency. Their only solution is CBDCs, right? And I mean, when we can see how quickly that could get very dystopian, right? And so uh, I mean, most people I've talked to are against CBDCs to some degree. But what we are seeing is things like um, there are there are parts of legislation that are being passed that essentially allow interbank transfers and like the, you know, instant um, permissionless transfers of money between banks, you know, which would cause a lot of problems with T0 settlements and a lot of issues that arise when it comes to major clearing houses and, you know, just making sure that the bank's ledgers or their numbers are, you know, what they're supposed to be. And so I think it's interesting that we uh, that as we continue to kind of more big players come into this, I want to see, I'm keeping a close eye, you know, people, it was talked about for a day, I think, or maybe two days in this space before everybody forgot about it, about, you know, uh, JP Morgan and their Onyx chain, you know, I mean, they're not just, they're not just investing money into it and building out a chain just to, you know, play with it. You know, there, there is a longer, larger play there. And uh, I think that that's what's going to be interesting in the next probably like two to five years, seeing what banking institutions end up spinning up their own sort of pseudo private chain that allow this, you know, similar to like a, a CCIP, you know, a cross chain communication amongst these private chains and banking. I think that that's ultimately what will end up happening, maybe, but, you know, I guess realistically we'll know in two to five years. Yeah, true. Calvin, over to you. Awesome points, you guys. Um, I just kind of want to throw back to the uh, uh, the Bitcoin having uh, and whether that'll impact. You know, I, when, in the short term, it's a little harder to say. Um, the chart looks really good for a breakout to the upside, but um, some statistics that might kind of color this subject. Um, it's it's about seventy percent of what miners uh, mine gets actually sold, and so after the having. Um, they will be capped at the equivalent of what we have right now as 50%. So there will be an absolute decrease in supply. <clears throat> so this is my this is my um, fourth having. So I was here for the first one, and the very first. Um, there's always been a slight delay between the having and the impact from the miners, and that is because uh, miners generally have a certain amount of reserves that they run through over the course of the next. A month and a half or so, and I've seen this play out after each of these halvings, where um, these miners are really going through an adjustment phase. They're either they're deciding whether they have to turn something off, or they're they're hurrying financing the last few things. But the the Bitcoin that they have in reserve is is sort of used right after that having. And I wanted to kind of point out that the Bitcoin reserves, the miner reserves, uh, they were all the way up to nearly three million. Uh, back in 2016, and then they dropped in in about mid end of 2018, and then ramping up through the uh, bear market. So during the bear markets, the miner reserves actually goes up, and it's because miners know when to sell. They're they're pretty savvy about that, and so they wait and they stack up as much as they can, and they liquidate during the bull market. Well, what's strange about our current period is that uh, there's been absolutely no 
visible change in the minor reserves for about a year and a half. And normally, uh, there would have been a ramp-up phase during the bottom of the bear market. And uh, we had slightly higher numbers <clears throat> in, the, in 2022, but it's only by about 250,000 Bitcoin. <clears throat> We're about 2 million Bitcoin on, as minor reserves now. And the on-chain reserves has uh, been around, it was roughly around 2 million beginning of the year, and it's dropped down to about uh, 1.7 million. So we're seeing less Bitcoin in the hands of people that can really sway the market. And uh, after the halving, uh, those minor reserves, they just can't go back up to those levels. Because if they're using Bitcoin to finance operations, uh, they, just can't, uh, they just can't accumulate the way they used to. So Bitcoin's becoming more, I mean, I don't know if decentralized is the word because... <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of big players that are amassing huge amounts, which is sort of a centralization of Bitcoin. Um, but I think the impact will be that it'll just drag prices up. There's just really no way. Uh, I don't think miners are stupid and they're going to use them uh, frivolously to, to drop the markets and play games. And I think a lot of the ETF buyers are looking to miners uh, to buy their stack so that it may not even hit the market. That, that's actually what I wanted to talk about. Um, that's what's happening right now. Is most I, I do a lot of um, OTC buy, uh, sells and buys, and what's happening, um, big, big um, entity like hedge funds. I work with uh, one of the top five uh, institutions, not just a hedge fund. He owns multiple, and, and they're trying to buy every single miner out right now. Then you have Russia that is doing an incentive to every single miner to come back to um, Russia and to mine. They will actually pay for your um, energy. And if anyone knows about mining, most of the mining was happening out there until I think three years ago, maybe it was, or two now. I forget, I'm so bad with time that they kind of made it so they weren't making any profit. The energy was too expensive. So they had to stop their you know kind of systems. They moved somewhere else. They figured a different way of actually mining, which was a little cheaper on energy. Now Putin and everyone over there, especially in China now too, is ramping up. Hey, come here. We'll pay for your energy. We'll pay for your tokens. So a lot of miners right now, uh, I mean, I have a hedge fund right now. If any big, you know, million dollar miners want it, they'll pay millions of dollars a day just to get your tokens. And, and, and that's the issue right now. And, that, and that's where the whole CBDC is this narrative. They want Bitcoin. They want something like it. Um, they want a financial system that is made like that. Um, they just didn't think that we would take upon this system as fast as we are. All it is is bartering. Uh, we all these lived on a bartering system. Um, if you really look at it, XRP, all this stuff has been in our banking system about two of the big five financial banks in the world since 2016. We've had a CBDC for a long time now in America. We just never talked about it. I'm pretty sure we've had two of them. They could do almost everything they say a CBD can do today. They just don't talk about it. I've, I've had money frozen. I've been claimed as a terrorist because I've sent money to Pakistan or India before. Um, and I've, you know, other things. The reason I got into crypto isn't what a lot of you got into crypto. I didn't get in 2021. I got in a long, long time ago where I was sending hundreds of Bitcoins to pay for things so my money wouldn't get frozen. It was a different world for me. So I've, I've seen a way different flow. And, and, and the thing that you bring up, Calvin, is very true. The miners don't have the power to make the stuff. But now with Asia being back in the market, if you go back when they were originally could, you know, they've always been in the market. It's just a flaw. They just couldn't change their crypto to fiat. Now they can again. So this is going to be a very interesting world to see Asia, Hong Kong, where they love PVP. They love watching what America does in Europe, and then they do the complete opposite. Or, or they continue doing that, then people pull, put, put a big long in, and then they drop it overnight. So we have certain entities, and this is why the ETF was created, because the big financial institutions over here in the Western world understands that Russia, uh, China, and many other places, even Turkey, got into crypto early, so did India, very early, um, when we didn't look at it as much. So it's a very, very different world right now where <clears throat> the ETF protects them from this volatility but allows them to take a spot and still stay on the spot on Bitcoin and hold that position that they want to hold. Because it's just a network. Bitcoin's liquid gold, guys. Remember that. That ends my another talking. Sorry for talking over you, Wolf. 
Well, good, brother. Um, yo, I think we just crushed the space. I feel like we covered a whole lot of things. We didn't talk as much about the coins and picks, but I feel like we got a pretty solid uh, look on the market. Um, and I really do appreciate all of you guys. This was a great conversation. I had a, I had a fun time. Um, so I just want to say thank you for everyone who, who was here, especially the people on the panel of speakers. Um, so that's a good conversation. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it as well, um, be sure to hit that retweet button. Bottom right corner, I think it's a little white or purple message icon with number 13. Uh, retweet the space for us because it's the best way to support. Um, and of course, follow everyone on stage because they're a bunch of savages, honestly. And uh, they're legends. And uh, my name is Cade. I'm hosting from Behind the Wolf account. Give us a follow, the Wolf account, um, because you don't want to miss the future spaces. we got plenty of them every single day, basically. Um, and remember, seven years of good luck in airdrop farming for everyone who engages. It's true. Um, Charlie, Charlie, yeah, over to you, real quick. I was just going to ask, should I say the tokens? Should we go over them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's not. <laughs> we'll say the we'll say the well uh, you know what? next next week I will open up correctly and I will I will set the stage correctly and we, it will it will be a, a different day different week you know I'm not gonna make a, a call this time we'll just we'll have a fresh week <laughs> it'll be wonderful uh, but with that uh, what, is, is that not good no bueno no I think it's great and there's nobody here anyway on stage that did the calls except for me uh, me and you Nate's gone. Uh, <sighs> Sean's yeah, no, not here. Cal, was Calvin, were you here? No, he well, he couldn't make it. No, last week, no. Oh. <laughs> no. So it, it doesn't make sense. We could roast them, but they wouldn't know about it. So probably better to wait. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do it next time. So awesome. Sounds good. Guys, thank you all for being here. Have a wonderful day. We will see you tomorrow.